Well, markets, like economies, move in cycles. Long-term market watcher Oak Tree Capital Management co-founder Howard Marks says of all the cycles to watch now, the credit cycle may be the most important. I talked to him earlier today. The credit cycle is extremely volatile and extremely influential. And most people don't understand it. So that's, that combination of three things means, well, people really should learn about that. When, when, there's, when money is freely available, to put it briefly, bad deals get done. Bad companies can raise money. Securities sell too high. Loan protections go down. That's not a great time to be a provider of capital. Uh, then every once in a while we get what's called a credit crunch and the credit window, the place where people go to borrow and get capital for their businesses, slams shut. It doesn't go, eh, 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 eh. it slams shut all of a sudden, mostly out of fear uh, in relationship to negative events in the world and then nobody can get money. Even good companies can't get money and the standards are incredibly high and that obviously is a terrific time to be a provider of capital. So. Uh, it is, as I say, incredibly influential, and it's something really that people should bone up on. And we hear now about covenant light, covenant free loans. Is it reminiscent of another period? You were one of the people who positioned yourself well going into the last credit crisis. Do you see that now? Absolutely. Uh, my last memo, uh, which went out two weeks ago tomorrow, was entitled The Seven Worst Words in the World. And they are too much money chasing too few deals. Because when there's too much money around and the buyers are too eager, then what happens? Prices go too high. That reduces prospective returns and increases prospective risk. And it's important to know that. Uh, in the memo, I talk about having written another one in February 07 called The Race to the Bottom, talking about how people were com competing to put out money by doing the things I describe, saying, I'll take less return, I'll shoulder more risk. That's a terrible combination. But when people have too much money and are afraid of missing out, that's what they do. It's, it's similar today in some parts of the market. And I, I don't want anybody to think that I'm saying it's, it's as bad as in the last cycle. The last cycle, up cycle, brought on the worst financial experience since the Great Depression 80 years earlier, and t today's conditions are not comparable. So some of the ills are similar qualitatively, but not to, this, to the same extent. What does this period remind you of? I mean, we know it's different this time, most dangerous words we can say, uh, but they do, we do tend to fall. It feels as though some of the lessons of that great crisis right. were not learned. Yes, well, you know, one of the main themes that runs through the book is Mark Twain's Putative quote, uh, history does not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. So the details are never the same. No cycle is ever the same as any of the others. But this one is, is similar to the last one in the sense of, of the, uh, I would say, the imbalance of money over ideas, the eagerness to put it to work, and thus the willingness to accept uh, weak deals. Now it's manifesting itself uh, in different ways. Uh, 11 years ago or 12 years ago, it manifests itself through uh, the issuance of subprime mortgages and the creation of uh, subprime mortgage-backed securities. Uh, they're, they're not being heard from these days, and there is no analog to the subprime today in terms of uh, magnitude or, uh, let's say, fraudulence. Uh, but still, in the credit market, Nowadays, it is, it is easy for companies to borrow money uh, with, with securities that uh, have low yields, um, have few risky provisions, which lenders in the past have looked for, and importantly, on the basis of something called adjusted EBITDA. EBITDA is cash flow. Adjusted EBITDA says you, you take the EBITDA you reported last year, well, we made $40 million, and then you say, well, it really would have been 50 if this, this, and this. Or next year it might be 60 if that, that, and that. And so you say, well, on basis of 60, this looks like a conservative security. Uh, it's never conservative to base a lending decision on a what if. 
One of the things that does seem uh, overblown, not fraudulent, but overblown, uh, is the power and weight of the FANG stocks, the big tech stocks in the market today. Do you look at them and think that might be a place to be cautious about? We're not very much involved in the stock market. We are credit investors. And uh, I'm no expert in the FANGs, but I do, uh, I do include the FANGs on the list of things that, that I think in indicate the tenor of the market. And when I see the fangs and the willingness to lend 100-year money to Argentina and, uh, and things like that, uh, what it tells me is that this market is characterized by optimism and uh, greed and fear of missing out and risk tolerance. And these are all factors that make me want to be more cautious. You know, Warren Buffett said, the less prudence with which others conduct their affairs, the greater the prudence with which we must conduct our own affairs. I think this is a time when the prudence being applied by others is not high, which means the prudence we apply should be.